Okay. This game is called Shoot the Moon. Uh, it was originally uh, called that because as you went up, the, to the top ranking one was the moon. And you'd start out the earth and slowly work your way up uh, through the different, different atmospheres and stuff. Uh, I've allowed my students to choose what they want to put in for things. This student chose different uh, internet themes. So the top one was Google. There's another theme here. I did a basketball, I'm not basketball, baseball. Strikeout, ground out, single, double, triple, home run. This one, as you can see, this was our first model. We had the we used a Forstner bit, and now we use a rounded one. This works a lot better because the ball actually stays in the hole instead of bouncing out. Here's another one here. This is how good looking you are. So average, madly attractive, hot, delicious. Uh, this is one in the process of being made. Um, you know, the girl is making this one, and it's, it goes from, you know, it's all basically the hot guys that she likes. Um, here's another one here, a Star Wars theme. So you, as you go up, you know, sit forward is the uh, highest one. So I've allowed my students to, you know, have a little bit of creativity and uh, we can put, you know, whatever they want on here. I use a laser engraver, but I know that you know, a lot of people don't have one of those. But it'd be uh, pretty easy to just use a uh, wood burner or something like that to just you know, write it in there, or just carve it in with a Dremel or something. So there's, there's lots of other ways to uh, do this marking. So I'm gonna show you how to make it. So we'll start that process right now. The reason why I like this project so much is that it uses um, metal, wood, and plastic. The original game had metal balls, but the uh, plastic ones are a little bit cheaper, and it gives it a really cool look as it's traveling up. You can see through it, and uh, it's kind of fun. The metal balls, I think, work slightly better, but uh, you know, this is more fun. I've tried uh, to use wood balls, but they don't work nearly as well. So don't, don't do wood, do metal or plastic. The size of this ball is one and a quarter. I also get this ball from uh, Delvey's for a little over a dollar each. So they're pretty cheap. Okay, the size of the long board is 17 inches by three inches and it is three quarters of an inch thick. That one's pretty easy to cut out. I usually cut a board big enough to make four of these and then have students uh, go through the prepping process together in groups of four. The other part is seven inches. So here's seven inches and then how tall is it? It's three, three and three quarters. Then we have this groove in here. The hole is three eighths of an inch right here. So what I do is I take a drill, I drill a hole here and here, and here three eighths of an inch. And then we just use a scroll saw or coping saw if you want to do it by hand and just cut straight between the two holes. And coming down, just drill drill the hole one inch down to for the center of the hole. That'd be one inch. And then about three quarters of an inch the other way. So one inch down, three quarters of an inch over. For both of those holes and then just cut straight in between them. If you if you're a little bit off on your cut, if you you know a little wobbly, then you can use a file to come in there and just file it flat. That'll help these slide real easily. 
these two screws are about two inches apart. So they go down into there. I countersink them so it holds it nice and easy. And you just take that up whatever half, you know, the thickness of that piece of wood is so it hits it right, right in the center. The next dimension would be the riser here. And this one, it depends. What you want is whatever the height is from here to here, it should be one inch less than here to here. So basically your the ball should be traveling one inch as it goes from here to here. So one inch of elevation. Sometimes we mess up on these dimensions here, so we need to adjust over here. The bars need to be exactly the same as the the ball in width, so that would be one and a quarter, and you should line them up so that they are right above the holes. So. Let me just use some screws here and a a little dowel there. You can use whatever you want here to just create a thing to make it so that the ball doesn't fall off the edge. Alright, so I've cut two pieces of wood. The top one is big enough to make four of the uh, long skinny piece and the uh, thicker one but shorter one is actually big enough to make eight of the, uh, the back piece. All right, first I'm going to use the joiner to clean up one of the edges on both of the boards. Okay, this wood is already at like 0.93 inches and I want to take this one down to 75. So I'm going to run it at 85 and then 75. You don't want to take off more than 10 at a time. Okay, this other board needs to get planed down to half an inch. So, because it's at 0.93, I need to go down to 50. So I'll probably go like 90. I'll flip it over. Do 80, and 70, and 60, and 50. Okay, so I got my first board planed down to 0.75, and I got the other board planed down to half an inch. The next step will be to take this one, cut it into strips that are three, uh, three and three quarters, and this one into strips that are three inches. This one will be the, the long piece, and this one will turn into the uh, the back piece. Uh, I only did one side on the uh, jointer, so the other side is still rough. Make sure when you're on the uh, table saw that you put the good side against the fence, because then you're going to keep the good side, otherwise you'll have a really bad looking finish on one side.
next is to use the miter saw. On the miter saw I've placed pieces of tape on both sides referencing 7 inches and the 17 inches. So you can put the board up to that piece of tape and cut and you don't have to worry about measuring every single time. Make sure when you're using the miter saw that the board is all the way against the fence. Okay. Then we'll line it up with the tape. Now we're ready to cut. Again, the reason why I have students work together through this, through this stage is so we can have as little scrap as possible. So as you can see, I've planned it out so that uh, I used the right width of wood so we'd have very little scrap cut off the end here and then cut the length so that we'd have just a little bit left over, you know, just in case. And so there's very little scrap. After this point, the students would be working on their own. All right, because I have a laser engraver it's really easy for me to mark exactly where all the holes are going to be and put all the lettering and the points on there. Uh, so let me give you the dimensions for those who don't have one. The uh, first one here is going to be three and a half inches from there to here. For This, this is the lowest scoring one so three and a half and then from then on out the difference between them is, uh, is two and three eighths so just measure two and three eighths, two and three eighths and just work your way down until you get to the uh, highest one. There are six levels. All right, and now I'm going to show you how to set up the drill to I do those. This is the uh, basically a router bit. It's a round one. It's one and a quarter, the exact same size as the ball. Okay. I have these clamps here. Mainly, this one is the more important one because as the drill is turning, it wants to take this board and just turn it with it. So we got to prevent that from happening. So I'm going to line that up with my laser and then bring this up on there tighten it down you want to make sure it's all the way against the fence and that there's nothing underneath it and I've set my my stopper up here to stop at the exact right spot every time so I'll just go until it won't go anymore. 
Okay, I have that set at the uh, lowest speed. It's going at 400. So here we go. All right. Now, as you can see, you want to go down fairly quickly, and then as soon as it reaches the bottom, come up really fast. If you leave it down in the bottom, just spinning, it's going to start chattering and. Uh, It'll mark up the hole pretty bad. So once you reach the maximum depth, then just raise up as soon as you can. Okay, next we need to hammer down the tip of the bars so that they will be able to receive a hole for it to make the pivot point to open and close. You want to pound it while it's hot. So we're going to use a blowtorch here and heat it up. We got water right next to us. You don't want to run across the shop with a hot bar trying to look for water in the sink. So make sure you have water ready to go, blowtorch ready to go, and everything's you know, nice, in a nice safe spot. Right, so here's my blowtorch. This might take a while. So I'll probably speed it up in the video editing process. You want to go till it's bright orange. Okay, now I'm ready to hammer it. Make sure you're hammering it nice and flat. Okay, this is what you want. It's got to be fairly flat, but not super skinny. And wide enough to take a hole right there. So I'm going to quench it now. Okay, make sure it's cooled down all the way. So now we're ready to drill a hole. Okay, I'm ready to drill the hole in the rod right here. It's in a vise. It's just hanging over right here. Make sure it's nice and flat. I'm using a drill bit like this. It's a center drill. I got it at Harbor Freight. A package of five of them, all different sizes. So I can use them for lots of different applications. I'll show you a different one at another time. But So here's one of those drill bits here. You just want to just barely go through. You don't want to drill it super big. You just want to use the tip right here. Okay. So I'm turning on here. Make sure you're right in the center. time. Okay, now I'm through. I'm going to have it go down just a little bit more to give it a little bit of a taper there. And that's ready to go. Here it is. It's left a little bit of a burr right there. Might need to grind that off. 
or I could just turn it over and use that chamfer from the other side. But don't don't go too far because you'll make the hole too big. Alright, All right, now it's time for a good old layout. So what I'm gonna do is I can measure one inch down. Make a mark and then come this way. Three quarters and make a mark and this way. And where they go together, that's going to be a center point for our hole. We'll do the same thing to the other side. Point seven five here. And then one inch. Sometimes I'll put the one inch on the edge of the wood and then make a mark at zero. Alright, so I'll just extend that up. Alright, now I have two marks for my holes. I'll drill those with a 3 8 inch drill bit and then we'll draw a line connecting the top and the bottom of those holes. Now the holes have magically appeared. I'll draw the line there. I think you all know how to drill a hole so I didn't show that part. Right at the top of the hole. And then right at the bottom of the hole. Okay, next I'll cut that out on the scroll okay, saw. Here's the scroll saw, all ready to go. I've made these little uh, thumb wrenches to help loosen and tighten all the little knobs on this because sometimes students can't tighten it enough with their fingers. This gives them just a little bit more leverage but not so much that they can damage it. Alright, so I need to take the blade out so that we can feed it up through the hole. So what first thing we want to do is take the tension all the way down to zero so that loosens the the blade up a little bit before it was really really tight so let's make it loose then we'll loosen this if you can't loosen it by hand then that's what this little nifty thing is for just loosen that up a little bit the blade comes right out you can lift up the entire arm and feed the blade up through the hole that we drilled bring it back down make sure the blade is all the way back inside and then tighten it down and then give it just a little bit more with that not so much that you bust it off All right now I'm just gonna make two straight cuts on this okay make sure you're pushing down on the wood otherwise it's gonna bounce up and down quite a bit I forgot to do one thing don't forget to bring the tension back up All right, here we go. After you're done, loosen the blade, loosen the clamp, lift it up, and you're ready to go.
Now, on the scrolls, I probably will speed that part up, but if you, when you're cutting, if you're having a hard time making a straight line, if you're going to make an error, make an error on the part that you're going to be removing, because then you can take a file and uh, fix any defects later on. You can also back up and you know, make a new cut. And you should be able to get it fairly straight. If you have large bumps on the uh, bottom part of that groove, you can use a file to help fix it. But if they're not that bad, then you just take a stick, wrap it with some sandpaper to get in there and try to smooth out any bumps. That way when your bars are moving back and forth, you won't feel them you know, going over bumps. The, the bottom is more important than the top. You don't have to do as much work on the top. The bottom you want nice and flat though. Okay, here comes some more layout. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center of this. Seven inches it should be, three and a half. So, I'll just find the center really quick. Add on three and a half. So, make a mark right on that. Okay. So, from from there, I'm going to put my one inch mark right on that. And then I'm going to put a mark at two and another mark at zero. And that makes those two two inches apart. And our board that's going to be coming off of here is three inches, so we'll have plenty of room there. All right, now how high up should they be? Well, the the board that they're going to get is going to be attached to is three fourths. So I'm going to go half of that. Half of three fourths is three eighths. Just double the bottom number there. All right. So I'm going to go up three eighths of an inch on both of those and go the other way. There's my X marks the spot there. My other one. All right. Those are where I'm going to drill my holes. And I'm actually going to use the exact same drill bit that I used for the metal bars. The, the larger diameter of this drill bit just happens to be the same size as the head of the screw, so it makes the perfect countersink drill bit for this part as well. So, here we go. go so you have a little bit of a ridge there. So the ridge is going to make it, you know, it'll make it so that the screw head will sit in flush and won't be like popping out. Now it doesn't drill all the way through. So we'll just use a regular drill, just a handheld drill to drill the rest of the way through. Okay, make sure you remember that uh, this part goes on the side with the highest score. Okay, I've had lots of students accidentally put it on the wrong side and they have to go through this process twice. So make sure you attach it to the side with the 5,000 points. All right now, I kept marking that line up. What I'm going to do is keep transferring that halfway mark down here just so I know exactly where the halfway mark is all the way around. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with this piece of wood. I'm going to mark the halfway point. I'm going to do that on the back. It's three inches, so half of that is one and a half. So 
there it is. Just quickly mark that. Same thing right here. Just so I know exactly where that is. All right now, to attach these two together, uh, some quite a few steps here. So pay attention. I have two drill bits. Okay, one of them is. Seven sixty fourths, and the other one is five thirty seconds. Okay. Now we want to use the bigger one to drill this hole the rest of the way through. Now the bigger one is the same size as the screw with the threads, so that means that this screw is just going to pass through this without grabbing anything. Now the smaller, the smaller one is to pre-drill the oak here. I usually use oak or birch and so I'll drill in there and that makes it so that the screw won't split the wood or um, sometimes when you're going into end grain you can just snap the head right off the screw because it can't go down deep enough. So that's just to relieve some pressure on the wood and make it easier for the screw to go in in there. Okay, so this this drill bit should be about the same size as the shaft of the screw. And then this one should be the same size as the entire screw threads and all. All right, so I got a hand drill here. I'm going to put the big one in first. Put it in there and turn this and it tightens it. Hold the silver one, turn the black one until it tightens. You can also, as long as it's on the forward direction, just hold that black part and just kind of turn that and it'll just tighten it up even more. And now I'm just going to drill this the rest of the way through. You don't have to watch that, I'll just do it real quick. So the scrap wood. Put that scrap wood in there, like that. And I'll put this board in with the 5,000 up, my mark there. Just a little bit down. Doesn't have to be a lot. Well, yeah. So I'll bring it down about a half an inch and tighten that up. So it's holding it for me. Right. Now that will make it so I can put this on here and it'll sit flat. That way I can attach it and it won't be sideways. Okay. Now another thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take that line that I marked earlier and I'm going to transfer that up. Okay. so that I can line that one up with it. That way I have this centered because it's kind of hard to see once you're up on top of it. All right, so now that that's centered, I can drill down in, because I've already drilled these holes. I can take the smaller drill and go down in and pre-drill for the next step. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but I went in I made a different one of these boards because this one belongs to a student. I didn't want to do all the work. So I made this one. This one has a football theme to it. All right, so put this in there, line up the line, center line here, center line there, and then just pre drill the holes. Let's we'll take that down right in the center of that. Mark. Make a mark. And I can just go the rest of the way from there. Put 
that on there. Screw in. Now the screw should automatically just go all the way through. So what's happening is as it as the screw goes into this one, it's actually sucking this down onto it. Okay, now I'm going to do the other one. See, if I hadn't pre-drilled it, I, the amount of torque I'd have to put on the screw to tighten it down would be enough to break off the head. Don't forget to pre-drill. This should be nice and flush. All right. Going through that process, make sure that this it nice and flat okay if it's a little bit off then you can sand it till they match each other and should sit nice and flat next will be to make this little riser block here so in order to make that I need to measure how high this is so we'll do that really quick it is okay. It's one seven eighths. So I need to go cut a piece of birch that is three inches wide and one and seven eighths. One, I mean not one and seven, but seven eighths inches high. All right, I found a piece of scrap that's still pretty thick. It's wide enough to cut what I need, long enough that it's safe enough to feed through the table saw. So I'll just cut a long strip and that'll actually be enough for a couple of students to use. Now I'll just cut off three inches of this on the miter saw. Okay, remember, if I were to put the riser block right here, it should be one inch from the top of this to the bottom of the gap there. So we're just gonna glue that up here at the front. And if you want to reinforce it more, you can use some nails going from the bottom. Okay, I made this little spacer here. So from the distance from the outside to the outside is one and a quarter, just like the, the ball and just like the holes. So everything's gonna be the same size there. I put one here, I made another one up there. That way the uh, bars are parallel. Make sure you look straight down and uh, line everything up so that it's all in line with each other. And look at the holes up front. Make sure those are in the center of your riser block. And then you can mark where those holes are going to be. And we can drill it. Use the same drill that we used before, the smaller one. Go in the depth of the screw. Right. Okay, some little one and a quarter or one and an eighth inch screws. They're not very long, so they don't have to go very far. Turn that in.
you don't want to go too tight because then the bars won't rotate very well. So let's take these off. See how this one moves easily, but this one's really stiff. So I will loosen that just a little bit. It's still stiff, so I'll loosen a little bit more until it's perfect. All right, so they have plenty of movement. Now the only thing left that you have to do is just put a little dowel in right here and that ought to finish the project. Yeah, I drilled a 3 8 inch hole and I'm just uh, stick a 3 8 inch dowel down in like that. Okay, so, and that would finish it, except for I didn't show all of the, you know, sanding and stuff like that. So make sure you don't forget to sand it really well. There's a lot of saw marks that you want to sand off. And, uh, you know, there's some finishing options as well. So you can uh, stain it or um, one cool thing, this student took a, a blowtorch <laughs> to the uh, project and kind of enhanced it like that. But if you don't sand it, it does this. So, because these are the saw marks. So make sure you sand it really well before you do any you know, burning effects on a piece of wood. The oak looks really cool when it's burnt too. The oak, the, uh, the lines turn black, but the uh, in-between doesn't if you do it just right. All right, so hopefully you will enjoy this project. And uh, it shouldn't be too hard to do. Let's make sure it works. And almost. There we go. We got it. So, enjoy.